76 alive. But as we gather here today, I really want to discuss an entirely new threat to our country. Just a few miles up the road in Washington, D.C., an entirely different scene is unfolding. Our government and our legacy institutions are losing credibility in the public eye at breakneck speed, even though their systematic takeover of America has been going on for years. The federal bureaucracy, the mainstream media, academia, Hollywood, big tech, and every other nexus of power in America today has turned its fire against conservatives, against Christians, against anyone who stands in their way. I call this the crisis of legitimacy in the United States government. America was founded on the notion that all political power comes from the consent of the governed, and that sovereignty does not belong to any one official or institution, but it belongs, belongs to we, the American people. The reality, the reality is that the government in Washington, D.C. no longer represents the people it claims to serve. And it has stopped even pretending to execute the charge laid out by our founders, the protection of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Put simply, Washington is losing its legitimate claim to govern the American people. Millions of Americans look around and wonder, what's becoming of their beloved nation? They don't recognize the place that they grew up in, and they wonder what kind of future is in store for their children and grandchildren. Young men, particularly young white men, aren't signing up in great numbers for military anymore because they don't want to fight for a country that hates them. They don't want to die halfway around the world to protect the borders of Ukraine or Taiwan or any other country on the earth when our own border is being overrun by the millions with terrorists and cartel members and human traffickers coming in every day. They don't want to join a fighting force that is more concerned with woke activism, gender inclusivity, LGBT issues, than it is with protecting Americans. They don't want to be part of an operation that spends trillions of dollars abroad while the small towns they call home are falling into dissolution and our communities are being ravaged by drugs and depression while their jobs are shipped overseas without a second thought. And they don't want to fight overseas just to come home to a country hell-bent on vindictive identity politics that promises to take what little social and economic capital they have left and redistribute it to racial, sexual, religious, and other minority groups as a pure power play by the radical left. Who can blame them? And how long? Can a country last in that way? It isn't just happening in our military either. As we see every day, virtually every single institutional power in our country has become openly hostile to conservatives, to Christians, to our country's legacy, and even the concept of Western civilization itself. Our education system has been taken over by radicals who push insane political ideologies like CRT, DEI, transgenderism, and more on our poor children, while they no longer even learn basic reading, math, and civics. They come down with the full force of the law when a student tries to open a Bible or say a prayer in school. And you know, they're putting all this stuff over on our young people who have brains that are not fully developed yet. And to take somebody who's curious and impressionable and infect them with these kinds of things is nothing less than child abuse. Okay. You know, inflation, gas prices have risen so high that everyday American families struggle to even put food on the table and gas in their cars. And Washington's solution 
double down on insane environmental policies like the Green New Deal, mandatory electric vehicles, even though other countries pollute at far higher rates than we do, and we're sitting on some of the largest untapped oil reserves in the world. Our borders are wide open. An estimated 10 million illegal aliens have invaded our country since Biden took over, which is more than the population of 40 of the 50 states. A civilization cannot sustain itself this way, and we have no idea who these people are. They could be terrorists, spies, cartel members, or human traffickers, and they appear to be mostly military-age males. They could be affecting things like our cell phone systems and whether they work appropriately every day. And I guarantee you there's a whole bunch of stuff that they're going to be doing. All these people coming here are not our friends. The leaders in Washington won't enforce the law and protect you from the rampant crime that is destroying our inner cities and making them unlivable for families and children. And they even want to take away your ability to protect yourself by attacking lawful gun owners and slowly abolishing the Second Amendment. Meanwhile, they let hardened criminals out of jail while peaceful pro-life protesters and patriotic grandmothers who walk into the Capitol on January 6th are facing a decade or more in prison. Think about that. Think about that. And this is at a time when we lived through the summer of BLM, Antifa protests, burning down cities, destroying businesses, looting stores, with support from government officials and the biggest corporations on earth. The law is being used to constantly harass upstanding citizens while the real criminals go untouched. To our leaders, you and I are the enemy. Not the carjackers and the looters and the criminals who are running rampant in our cities. 